everyone! Welcome back to Math Room by Teacher Joan. In this video, we are going to have a lesson in basic calculus and the topic is all about evaluating limits numerically. Here is the learning objective. At the end of the lesson, you should be able to illustrate the limit of a function using a table of values or numerical method. So how to find the limit using a table of values? In numerical method, we need to follow certain procedures. First, we need to construct a table of values consists of numbers that are very close to the independent variable being approached. Second, we need to find the values of f of x by substitution. And third, analyze what happens to the function or f of x as the values get closer to the independent variable. Take note on this following. Focus only on what is happening to the function near the point and not what is happening at the point. Second, for the limit exists, left-hand and right-hand limits must approach a fixed number. Let's begin with example number 1. Consider the limit of 2x minus 1 as x approaches 3. We will first consider approaching 3 from its left or true values less than 3. Always remember that the values to be chosen should be the values that are very close to 3. Let's have this table of values. As you can see here, we have the values of x from 2.88 to 2.9, 2.95 to 2.999. These are the values that I have chosen that are very close to 3. And you may use any other values that you would like to. The second step is to substitute each x value to the given function, the 2x minus 1. So when x is 2.88, it is 4.76. When x is 2.9, it is 4.8. When x is 2.95, it is 4.9. When x is 2.999, it is 4.998. This time, let us consider approaching 3 from its right or through values greater than but close to 3. So we have this table of values. The values of x are 3.4, 3.35, 3.11, 3.001. Again, you may choose any values as long as these values are close to 3. So when x is 3.4, the value of f of x is 5.8. When x is 3.35, it is 5.7. When x is 3.11, it is 5.22. When x is 3.001, it is 5.002. After completing the table of values from the left and from the right of the independent variable being approached, which is 3, we need to observe what is happening to the given values. Let's begin with the left hand. As we can see, as we approach 3 from the left, the values of f of x are getting closer and closer to 0.5. So we can see that the left-hand limit is equal to 5. For the right hand, as we observe the values of x approaching 3 from the right, the values of f of x are approaching 5. Therefore, we can say that the right-hand limit is also equal to 5. So this time, we can now conclude that as the values of x get closer and closer to 3, the values of f of x get closer and closer to 5. So meaning to say, the limit of 2x minus 1 as x approaches 3 is equal to 5. Let us now consider another problem. Let us find the limit of this rational function x minus 2 over x squared minus 4 as x approaches 2. If we're going to look at the independent variable being approached, it is not part of the domain of the function. Because if we're going to substitute 2 to x in the denominator, it will make it 0 and the function becomes undefined. But this is not a problem. Remember that in evaluating a limit, we only need to go very close to 2 and we will not go to 2 itself. So let's begin with the table of values from the left of 2. So we have these chosen values, 1.88, 1.9, 1.99, and 1.999. These are the values that are close to 2. So we substitute each x value to the function, 
when x is 1.88, f of x is 0 0.25773. When x is 1.9, f of x is 0 0.25641. When x is 1.99, f of x is 0 0.25062. When x is 1.999, f of x is 0 0.25006. Let us now consider values from the right of 2. So we have this chosen x values 2.22, 2.1, 2.01, and 2.001. Substitute each x value to the given function. When x is 2.22, f of x is 0 0.23697. When x is 2.1, it is 0 0.24390. When x is 2.01, it is 0 0.24938. When x is 2.001, it is 0 0.24994. After completing the table of values, let us now observe what is happening to the values of f of x. As we approach 2 from the left, notice that the values are getting closer and closer to 0 0.25. Therefore, we can now conclude that the limit of the function as x approaches 2 from the left is 0 0.25. Try to observe the values from the right. So as we approach 2 from the right, the values of f of x are also getting closer and closer to 0 0.25. Therefore, the right-hand limit is also 0 0.25. So in general, the limit of this rational function x minus 2 over x squared minus 4 as x approaches 2 is equal to 0 0.25 or 1 fourth. Let us now have our third problem. Let's find the limit of this piecewise defined function x squared minus 1 if x is less than 2 x minus 4 if x is greater than or equal to 2 as x approaches 2. Looking at this given problem, this looks a bit different, but the logic and procedure are exactly the same. We will still approach the constant 2 from the left and from the right, but we need to take note that we should only evaluate the appropriate corresponding functional expression. So in this case, when x approaches 2 from the left, the values taken should be substituted to the function with a condition of x less than 2, and that is the function x squared minus 1. Why? Because this is the part of the function that accepts values that are less than 2. So we have this x values 1.88, 1.9, 1.99, and 1.999, which are all values that are less than 2. Again, we need to substitute each x value to the correct functional expression and that is the x squared minus 1 because of the condition x less than 2. So when x is 1.88, f of x is 2.5344. When x is 1.9, it is 2.61. When x is 1.99, it is 2.9601. And when x is 1.999, it is 2.9960. Let us now have a table of values from the right of 2. So from the right of 2, we have chosen the following values, 2.22, 2.1, 2.01, and 2.001. This time, since we are approaching 2 from the right, we need to use the function that has a condition greater than 2, and that is the function x minus 4. So when x is 2.22, f of x is negative 1.78. When x is 2.1, it is negative 1.9. When x is 2.01, it is negative 1.99. And when x is 2.001, it is negative 1.999. Let us now observe what is happening to the function values. As we approach 2 from the left, the values of f of x are approaching one fixed value and that is 0.3. So the left-hand limit is equal to 3. Now, let us have the right-hand limit. As we approach 2 from the right, the values of f of x are approaching a negative number and that is negative 2. As we can see in these two values, they are not equal. f of x approaches 3 from the left while it approaches negative 2 from the right. 
In such a case, we say that the limit of the given function does not exist and in symbols, we don't put equal sign since D and E does not correspond to a certain value. D and E refers to the function that moves in different directions as its variable approaches C from the left and from the right. So the answer for this problem is the limit of this piecewise function as X approaches 2 does not exist. So after showing you how to find the limit of a function using numerical method, you need to check your own understanding. Find the limit of the following functions numerically. So you may pause the video to answer these problems. Let us now check our work. The limit of 2x plus 3 as x approaches negative 5 is equal to negative 7. Second, the limit of x squared plus 3x minus 4 over x minus 1 as x approaches 1 is equal to 5. And for the last problem, the limit of this piecewise function x minus 1 if x is less than 7, 3x plus 2 if x is greater than or equal to 7, as x approaches 7 does not exist. Did you get all of these answers correctly? If yes, great job! So what are the important things that you need to remember? Finding the limits numerically is a method in evaluating limits. It uses values that are close to the point being approached by the function. As we get closer and closer to that point, we are also getting closer to its corresponding value in the given function f of x. So in numerical method, we need to do the following. First, construct a table of values. Second, find the values of f of x by substitution. And third, Analyze the value being approached by f of x. So this is the end of our discussion about evaluating limits numerically. Thanks for watching. I hope you have learned a lot from this video. Please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe on my YouTube channel. Bye everyone. See you on my next video.